everybody, this is Brian. Jason. And this is the Perfectly Screwed Podcast. We just uh, cleaned up a little technical difficulty. And yeah, the computer wasn't working there for a second. I thought I fucked it up because of the extreme, unbelievable coldness this winter that we just had. Well, like you know, I said, electronics, you know, they don't, they don't like heat. No. I think they respond a little bit better to the cold, but not when it's negative 30 degrees and it's no. been sitting in a room that's not heated for yeah. a week. Yeah. So, well, it's heated right now. But note to self. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't heated for, yeah, a week. It's still not warm in here, by any means. It's not bad. Well, you got that Hugh Hefner fucking robe on. I do. So, I always wear my nice. Hugh Hefner robe. There One of these days I'm going to get a pot. There ain't anything you can't keep warm in that son of a <laughs> If only I had the money to go with the robe. Then we'd be in business. <laughs> Which I do not. So, no, um, speaking of the cold, did you hear about Texas? They got like, the first time in history it went to like single digits in Texas. Really? Yeah, and these motherfuckers, obviously. Well, it's, fucking, it's, it's Texas. It was so snowing in Miami yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Texas doesn't have, uh, you know, are are not equipped for the cold weather. They don't have nobody you know, south heaters is. and. Well, no, I mean, like in Mississippi and Alabama and stuff, it it gets down in the thirties. So, um, fuck, dude. There. I mean, we had heaters. Like when I lived in Mississippi, uh, I had a a wood burning, uh, big wood burning like furnace type thing, and we sure. did the whole house. But well, I, I'm talking more about like. Uh, snow removal equipment. Like, dude, oh, a yeah. couple years yeah. ago, Atlanta got like two inches of fucking snow and ice. Shit. There was people stranded on the goddamn interstate for days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. guys, yeah. it's like two inches of snow. Dude, they had a I, spattering, like, literally. You're in Atlanta. I mean, you're not far from a fucking exit. <laughs> Walk the fuck off. <laughs> Look. But I you don't just have to stay out there. When I lived in Jesus. Mississippi, um, they got a powdering. Like, you could see the ground through the snow. That's how little the snow was. It right. was just powder. They shut everything down, dude. Oh, well, yeah. Because yeah, I lived in the deep, deep south. And they shut everything down. Well, My factory closed everything. And I'm driving to work. Didn't even know the place was closed until I got there. And I'm like, I asked the security guard, I'm like, why are we closed? And she said... The weather. Did you see the snow? And we've got patches of ice. I said, this ain't snow, man. I said, this isn't even playtime. I said, this is nothing. Well, they just don't have anything to remove it. That's yeah, but no, it's because they don't know how to drive it. Well, that too. There was no need to remove it. You couldn't have removed it if you wanted to. Uh, you could have took a dust broom outside and removed that amount of snow. Well, it was nothing. It was literally nothing. To them, it was. Yeah, they were tripping balls. They thought the end of the world came. And uh, they were like, oh, my God, we can't drive on this. People are off the road and everything on, like, <laughs> like a quarter inch of black ice. And they're <laughs> off the road. And, what do you mean? Uh, what do you mean, why are we not open? <laughs> yeah. Did you fucking see the flurries out there? <laughs> yeah. It's like a Seinfeld episode. Yeah. Newman's like, you're not working today? It's raining. <laughs> I don't work in the rain. <laughs> I don't work in the rain. And George goes, but that's part of the creed. It's the first one. It's the first one. It's either rain or sleep. It's the first one. <laughs> Dude, that's a great episode. Oh, yeah. Calzones. <laughs> Calzones. Big Stein needs a calzone. <laughs> he smells it through he the clothes. Smells the clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Through his yeah. clothes. Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. Oh. So, <laughs> I, keeping with the fun and hilarity. I have a Karen story for you that I enjoyed heartily. I there I I find these randomly mostly on Reddit. Um, <laughs> there's a whole thing on Reddit called Fuck Karens and shit. It's a whole subreddit thing. And um, they had this one though that was hilarious. So little Baxter at this. Okay, this guy moves into his new house. Okay. He, it was the day he was moving in, he parked his car in his driveway, which was a single car driveway. So he parked his car there, he's moving his shit in and everything. He looks out the window, and there's a tow truck backing up to his car. His next door neighbor 
who is this Karen woman, <laughs> and the police are out there. So he comes running out. He's like, what the hell is going on? And the police explain that she called them because no one had lived there. And he said, well, I'm just moving in, you know. So, yeah, you know, I live here. So they went away. Well, she then proceeds to tell him that the guy who lived there before him didn't own a car. So she used to use his driveway to park her car because they have four cars and they only have a single car driveway also. Tough shit, Karen. Right, that's what he said. He said, well, now you can't park your car in here anymore. So he proceeds to go on about his day, and she continues to just park her car in his driveway. So he had to have her car towed repeatedly before she decided to stop doing that. Right? Right. Okay, so move on. He extends the driveway so it's a two-car driveway so his wife can park next to him. Okay, when he extends the driveway, she comes over and demands that since now he has a two-car driveway, that she should be allowed to use his other spot. And he said, no, that's for my wife. And she said, have your wife park on the street. <laughs> and he goes, uh, no, that's why I extended my driveway. <laughs> so she again proceeds to just take the other spot without asking. So again, he has to have a car towed repeatedly. So most recently over the holidays, Right? She went around to the neighbors and to him and posted handwritten notes on their door stating that she'd already told her relatives that they could park in their driveways and that she needs their driveways for her relatives over Christmas. So those driveways are going to be used for her relatives. <laughs> he went to her house wow. to tell her, no, they're not. She called the police <laughs> on him for what I don't know. When the police arrived, they explained to her what he explained, that if you park cars in his driveway, he's going to have them towed. And she started to go off on the cop, and the cop said, look, ma'am, may I remind you, if cars get towed, there will be fines. There will be impound charges. Do you really want that, or would you rather have your relatives park on the street? So... I just thought that was a, a well, neat little thing. I don't understand thing. why... The, the BS, audacity of some of these people. Well, just, why can't she just park on the goddamn street? Because <clears throat> she doesn't want to. She feels entitled. That's that's what makes you a Karen. You just feel that you're entitled 100%. to everybody else's shit. And I, do, I just don't get the audacity of some of these people. It, it You know, it's just amazing. I, I really think survival of the fittest should be brought back because some people just deserve to die, man. <laughs> some people just don't deserve to be living. I hate to say it, but it is true. Well, yeah, and I get And you are that fucking entitled that you think you can just take someone's parking space in their driveway in front of their house because you want it. What kind of shit is that? Yeah, and I don't understand why the cops wouldn't have done something sooner. <clears throat> oh, they did. Repeatedly told her to stop doing it. But, I mean, every time she did it, he just had a car tow and she had to pay the fine and the impound charges. So What a dumb bitch. Yeah, you think after the first time you wouldn't do it. I wouldn't have done it to begin with, but after the impound charges and the fines, you think you wouldn't have done it again? I mean, yeah, it was like, like two fucking towed for something, dude. I'm not doing it again. Right. It was two or three times before she stopped parking in this spot. Just like the time in Bloomington. It was the weekend of Little Five. I, I mean, I was 21, 22 at the time. Because mm -hmm. I had buddies down there. We're at my one buddy's apartment partying. It's like three in the fucking morning. His fucking house is completely fucking destroyed, dude. I'm talking mud. Mm -hmm. Like... Every square inch of the goddamn floor in this dude's house is, is mud. There's like standing puddles of water in that. Like, cause what? It, it had been raining all day. In his house? In his fucking apartment in Bloomington. God damn. Well, because you're talking about raining all day. Yeah. But you're, I mean, you're talking about hundreds of people in and out of this house, dude. Oh, it's okay. Or they were bringing the mud in. Right. Okay, I thought his house flooded or something. Ooh. Like, what the fuck? Just from people being in and out all day. So it's I like, think I'd have been pissed. Can't stay here. You ought to have been shitty as hell. So my other my other buddy Brady's like, well, my apartment's right over here. You can follow me there. Well, fuck, dude. I'm, I'm drunker than fuck. Fucked up. <sighs> Raining. 
get over to his apartment complex. There ain't a fucking parking spot to be had. <laughs> well, hey, look, there's a huge, wide open, empty parking lot right there. Why don't we park there? Absolutely. He's a good toad. Well, I found out, Yeah, you know, about five hours later at nine o'clock in the morning when... Someone towed your fucking car. I man. walked out and my car's gone, which sucks. But I had nobody to blame but myself when, now that it's not raining and I can clearly see because it's daylight and I'm hung over but not quite as drunk, I parked right under a, right up against the pole... And then right under a sign that said, No parking. No parking. All violators will be towed. <laughs> and they were. And they were. And they were. And 180 fucking dollars later. <laughs> yeah, that taught you a lesson real quick. Real you? fucking quick. Yeah. So, bring fucking buddies that have cash. <laughs> yeah. Which was crazy, dude, because one of my buddies was with us that always has, always had a bunch of cash. Mm hmm. I still don't know to this day why the fuck he came. Like, he he's one of those that would never come with us. Right. You know what I mean? Well, kind, of a home, he, kind of a homebody. Like thank God he did. Right. Man, you'd have been fucked. No, it was crazy, dude. Right, I would have been. You're like, thank you, God, for that one. So, crazy shit. here we go again on our continuing saga of the Trump. <laughs> Just wait. What's he up to now? <sighs> Okay, so over Christmas, I'm going to directly quote this from his Truth social media page. This is what he posted over Christmas, just yesterday. Oh, well, the 25th, because today's technically the 27th, so two days ago. He starts out with, uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. So that's that's kind of nice, you know, a good way to start out a message on yeah, Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. Good, yeah, good well wishes. Merry Christmas, everyone. He said, including <laughs> the <laughs> radical left Marxists that are trying to destroy our country, the Federal Bureau of Investigation that is illegally coercing and paying social and lamestream media to push for a mentally disabled Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> I read that the first time and I just chuckled because, you know what, it couldn't be more right. <laughs> right. But anyways, over the brilliant, clairvoyant, and USA-loving Donald J. Trump. Clairvoyant. Clairvoyant. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's psychic. <laughs> he said he's brilliant, clairvoyant, and USA-loving. Clear up, boy. <coughs> oh my God. I mean, I'll give you. On. I'll give you brilliant. Okay, you're brilliant. I'll give you that. You're you're a really good businessman. You're really smart. And me, I'll give you USA loving. Yeah, you, USA loving. But clairvoyance where I dropped the line, bud. You're trying to push it. Yeah, come that on. Now. Just squeeze it in. Yeah, the come, there too. come on now. You're not right. you're not predicting cards. You're not talking to the dead. Right. Let's stop that nonsense. So he goes. <clears throat> And, of course, I want to wish Merry Christmas to the Department of Injustice. <laughs> That's funny. Which appointed a special prosecutor who, together with his wife and family, hates the Trump. <laughs> More than any other person on the earth. Is he referring to himself as the Trump? <laughs> the Trump. That's great. Love to you all. <laughs> Then he goes on. There's nothing quite better than some condescending, <laughs> passive aggressive remarks for Christmas. <laughs> but hold on, he goes on to say his next post today, or yesterday, Monday. No, 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 this is still Christmas. This is still Christmas. Okay, later on that day, he posts the unselect committees, and he called them the unselect committee. <laughs> January 6th report is a complete hoax. No different than Russia, 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 and all the other scams that the disinformation-laden Democrats have been planning for years. If I weren't leading by a lot in the polls against both these parties, this continuation of falsehoods and lies would end quickly. First of all, he's not leading, not even close. He's not even on the board at this point. 
Well, he's um, going to be, though, Brian. He's clairvoyant. He's clairvoyant, yeah. I he forgot. knows exactly what's coming. You're damn right. Don't you question it. <laughs> he's USA loving, and Merry Christmas to you, too, <laughs> sir. He said, I won in 2016, did much better in 2020, rigged. <laughs> And the radical Marxists don't want to run against me or MAGA in 2024. I had almost nothing to do with January 6th. <laughs> almost nothing! Almost. He, now he's coming, you know, maybe a little. Maybe a little. Almost nothing. Yeah, almost nothing. But maybe a little. Maybe just a little. Well, almost nothing means a little. And then he, he ends it with free speech. <laughs> Damn this dude. <laughs> he said, I, at first he was like, I had nothing to do with January 6th. Now it's like, well, maybe a little bit. Maybe just now a little. Almost nothing. Almost nothing. Could have been just, just a hair. Just just a just a smidgen. Not much. Not much. I mean, almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, almost. I mean, he just put it out there. You know what they did? They did it on their own. Which, actually, I kind of agree with that. Because, look. We got a real problem in this country blaming other people for planting ideas in people's heads and then them doing it. If I tell you to go murder somebody and you go murder them, really, am I at fault for that? Shouldn't be. I shouldn't be because what did I do? All I did was say, hey, you should go murder that bitch. Hey, you took it upon yourself to go out there and kill her. I just suggested, Okay. Just because he suggests storming the Capitol doesn't mean that you all should gang up and go storm the fucking Capitol. Well, that's... Remember, that's kind of why I had a problem the episode we were talking about, the girl that uh, was found guilty for <laughs> basically making comments that led to a, her boyfriend's suicide. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just didn't agree with it. I just don't... I don't like that. Right, yeah. I mean, she was I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that what she did was right. No, she, by any fucking she's a the horrible person. Right. But is she guilty of murder? Absolutely not. No, of course not. I mean, just because you tell somebody to do something, they still have free will not to do it. You're right, too. Dude. We do have a fucking problem in this. Right. In, in our country with that shit. Right. There was a guy convicted, uh, I was watching a documentary recently. There was a guy convicted because he was making prank phone calls to McDonald's for the last 10 years and other fast food restaurants and telling them he was a cop and then having them strip search the female employees. Now, they did that. They strip searched and had them pull their butts apart and pull their coochies apart and everything. Now, given that's in very poor taste and you're a horrible person for doing that, I give you... But how can you convict this guy of anything other than making prank phone calls? They got him with impersonating a police officer, uh, solicitation of sodomy, and it's like, <clears throat> look, dude, like, man. man, I mean, again, like, I mean, I don't like, get, I don't give a f like, if you're calling me on the phone and telling me you're a cop. First of all, that's ridiculous. Okay? And the first thing I'm going to do is hang up the phone. And you're asking me to mow my yard. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. Right? You're on my yard. Right. I give a fuck if you're the cop or not. Right. If you're calling me on the phone and asking telling me, to, me you're a cop and asking me to sexually assault and asking me to pull women's ass cheeks apart, <laughs> I'm going to need verification. <laughs> I need you to come down here, sir. Yeah. That's, that's some of the latex gloves and maybe you can help. Well, that's Why in the fuck would I have to strip search anybody? That's what I would have said. As a manager of a fast food restaurant, anybody would immediately say, yo, if you want somebody strip search, walk your happy ass down here and strip search them yourself. Right, I'll cook Peace. you a fucking egg and muffin. Whatever right, you need, bud. Right, but we're not strip searching you Jack. Know, we'll give you a free cup of coffee. No, you there was one girl. Thanks for fucking protecting and serving, but what I'm not doing <laughs> is strip search. Under any goddamn no, circumstance. no. By the word of somebody over the fucking phone. It's strip surgeon. Wow. Dude, the one in fucking Kentucky, the, the chick that really made it blow up, she was 17 years old. 
Not only did they strip search her, they made her bend over, pull her butt cheeks apart, her coochie apart, and then they spanked her. He touched her. The male well, manager touched her all over her body, made her do jumping jacks. Well, all kinds of weird shit. In the manager's defense, <laughs> at that <laughs> point, you might as well slap her. Oh, no. He yeah, got, you no the, the manager went to prison for a while. Yeah, sure. Sexual assault and all. Yeah. Um... I, I mean, that's just fucking insane to me, man. Yeah, that's insane to me. I would have hung up the phone. I'd been like, bitch. But then it, she sued McDonald's and got $6 million off him because McDonald's knew about this for the whole 10 years. Had paid off tons of people and didn't inform anybody that this guy had been calling around to restaurants. The corporation knew about it. They had 16 boxes full of documents on this guy. Didn't inform the law. Didn't inform any of their management. You think after the first couple, you might have put out a memo <laughs> and said, "Hey, if anybody calls claiming to be a cap and tells you to strip search employees, please do not do so. He is not a police officer." You know, you think after the first couple, you you kind of yeah, give well, a heads like up I to said, your management even team. Even if he is, even if he is, no, he wasn't. He was a prison guard. He was. He was a jackass. Yeah, of course. But, like, even if it is a real cop, like I said, calling you and telling you to strip search somebody. No, no. not going to happen. Why in the fuck not would I do that? Not going to happen. But we're not talking about strip searching today. Oh, damn. Although, we could talk about strip searching. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, what I thought we'd talk about today is some places in Indiana. Because the last time we did Paranormal, we did Missouri. <laughs> Shout out to all our fans in Missouri. Thank you for listening. The show me stay. Yeah. <laughs> show me if you're hiding anything in your ass cheeks if you work at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Take my word for it. I'm just a man on a podcast. <laughs> Strip search all employees. But the first... What we'd like to talk about today in Indiana is some haunted places. And I think uh, some of the most haunted places, and everybody can agree, are cemeteries. Or everybody feels at least haunted in oh, cemeteries, absolutely. sees paranormal in cemeteries. Cemeteries are a very creepy place. A lot of dead people around, you know, usually yeah, out of the way, kind of quiet. I think, too, like, if, you know, if it's if it's night, if it's dark, you and some friends get together and decide to go into the cemetery, yeah. Now, you're going to have a lot of, I think you're going to have a lot of paranormal experience experiences in those situations, if not for nothing else. Because you're going in with that mindset. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And don't do that because it's completely illegal for everybody listening. If you go into cemeteries after dark, make sure you're not caught. Because the police will arrest you or at least make you leave the cemetery. I, yeah, I don't I don't fucking trust who fucking knows anymore. <laughs> Apparently, you don't call you on the phone and make you strip search, motherfucker. <laughs> it's Roger Bunchy's part of stuff. Uh, <laughs> The first one. Though, I would say if you go, if you do go into the cemetery, and I this is for real, just don't vandalize shit. Yeah, don't do that. No, I mean, if you get caught, well, that's disrespectful. Get, right, theory. it's disrespectful. I mean, yeah, if a cop comes rolling through there and catches you in the cemetery, like as long as you ain't fucking vandalizing anything, I'm, they're probably just going to tell you to get the fuck out. Probably, but they catch you in there fucking vandalizing to your fuck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't be fucking with my grandma's tombstone. So, the first one we're going to talk strip about... Search a motherfucker. <laughs> the first one we're going to talk about is Batson Cemetery. And do you know where Batson is? Mm-hmm. It's in Warren, Indiana. And that's not too far from us, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. No, it's like about 30, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, north, right? Warren's north of us? Yeah. Northeast. Northeast, yeah. <clears throat> now, for everybody listening in Indiana, it's better known as another name, and that's 13 Graves. And if anybody's been there, me personally, I've been there numerous times. And every time, first of all, I'm going to comment on this. I was sober every time. Okay, I was never fucked up while I was in the cemetery. Um, second thing is, this is probably the only place that I can 100% verify I've had paranormal experiences. It's what got me interested in the paranormal at a young age. Uh, Well, young, 18, 19. Right. But um, it's uh, 
The and the last person we buried here, it has not been. Uh, no one's been buried in this cemetery since 1960. It's a very very old cemetery. Yeah. No one's been buried there since 1960. Well, if you've ever been there, how big of a cemetery is it? It's it's not very big, really. It's um, why have they stopped burying people? You think? Uh, it's not really near anything. Uh, it's out in the middle of the woods. Okay. And you're going down the highway, and like there's woods on all sides, nothing around for miles, and then all of a sudden in the middle of the woods you come on to this open area, which is it's it's about maybe a little bigger than a lot for a house, maybe like a lot and a half. How many grave sites? <clears throat> um, there's quite a few. Uh, mostly older grave sites. I'd say there's probably maybe a hundred there total. It's not a huge cemetery. It's a little tiny old, old cemetery. And uh, they just stopped burying people there because there's, you know, it's out, it's out, it's out, of, just, it's out in the it's middle of nowhere. Of land. <laughs> well, it's out in the middle of nowhere, too. So it's southeast of Warren on a road called Willow Road. And it actually, you go uh, off, you go down Highway 3 going towards Warren, and you turn on to um, Willow Road. Or you can take 218 to 3 and turn down 3 and go on to Willow Road. But Willow Road is like a two-lane road, and it goes out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's just woods. It, like, basically connects Warren, and it you come out of Warren onto Willow Road, and you go through Willow Road, and it connects to the next town. There's nothing really in between Warren and the next town except for this fucking cemetery which is sitting out in the middle of nowhere so the uh, all the graves are dating back before 1960 and uh, most of them uh, the original ones are between 1780 and 1960 or 1959 because there's none be yeah all of them are before 1960 Damn. So 1780 is when they started burying people out here. And 1959 is when they stopped. Yeah, so the last person was buried in 59. Yeah, so you're talking about a settlement when the United States first became a country. Yeah, yeah. There probably was, yeah, there was probably a little town somewhere near there, maybe a logging town or well, something. Well, they could, I mean, you know, you're talking 1776, so they couldn't have been, they couldn't have been this west for that long. No, no. Well, originally it stated that there was an Indian burial area and that they moved it when the settlers moved in oh, shit. to put the graves there. Yeah, which is one of the reasons they say it's so haunted. Is it now, possible that it's haunted because the Indians cursed it? That's what a lot of people say, yeah. That it was cursed by the Indians because they were relocated. Wow. Because um, the Miami Indians were around Warren and all that at the time, so when the settlers came in, they just relocated the Indians, and a lot of people say that's what the problem with this graveyard is. So, one of the things, the reason they call it 13 Graves is, as you enter the graveyard, and a lot of people say these are stepping stones, but if you ever see them, they're, they're too big to be stepping stones. Okay, they're kind of buried in the ground a little bit. They're flat stones. And a couple of them have etchings on them, but you can barely read the dates on them and stuff. And if you, as you walk in the cemetery, they're at the, right as you get into the gate, like a few feet in, you'll see these stones. And they're right at the beginning of the cemetery. And they mark, from what people have said, 13 graves. Okay? <clears throat> the, the problem is, when you walk into the cemetery, if you step on these stones one by one, you count them, you will count either 11 or 12. When you turn around on the last stone and walk back the other way, you'll count 13. Every fucking time. I did it probably 30 times in a row over the years. Every single time, either 11 or 12 one way, 13 the other. Because hmm. there's one grave that said that it was there was a child buried there, but it was never marked. And as you walk, that grave appears. Well, that's wild. Some of the other things um, that you'll see there, and I've seen this, there's a weird thing that happens at night there. 
some of the gravestones near the back where the Indian reservation used to be into the woods, there's a hill that goes down to the creek. And the Indians used to have their reservation right down there by the bottom of the creek. That's where the Indians lived, near the water. And at the top of the hill is where the graveyard is. Okay. So near the back, near the older gravestones, they tend to glow. Mm. Like you'll see them almost shine with like like lights bouncing off them or like there's light on them. But there's not really any lights in the cemetery. I mean, you're surrounded by woods. The only lights are at the very front. So they wouldn't even project back there. And as you're sitting in the front, it'll look black back there. But as you stare at it a little more, they almost like glow and pulse. <laughs> You'll see some of the gravestones glow. And I've seen it repeatedly. And it looks like they'll glow, and then the next one will glow. And then one over here will glow. And then one over there, like it jumps around. It's very odd that is to watch. That's, that's crazy. So um, <clears throat> another thing people see in this graveyard is an old man. Now, I've never seen the old man, although I've heard the story about him. Uh, supposedly, see, this Indiana School for the Blind is like right down the highway from this thing, right down Willow Road a little bit, is the Indiana School for the Blind. It's about 100 meters or so away from this graveyard. So um, a lot of people say that the old man was the caretaker that worked at the school of the blind because he was buried there. They know for a fact that a caretaker that worked at the school of the blind was buried in that graveyard, and they think that he's still roaming around. So a lot of people say that the old man they see is the caretaker in the okay. graveyard. Now, another thing they see is orbs. You see a lot of orbs out there. Like, you'll see a light that'll just move through the graveyard, back and forth. And one time we were out there, me and my friends, and uh, a lot of people say the caretaker for the graveyard still haunts it too. That one of the orbs you see is a green orb, and it'll flow towards you and chase you out of the graveyard. And there was one time I was in the back fucking around because I kept seeing those stones glow because I wanted to figure out why the hell they were glowing. And the old caretaker's house is in the back, right before the hill. So it sits at the back of the cemetery, right before you go down the hill. So um, when I'm standing back there, I kind of looked off a little bit towards the caretaker's house, because I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. And I saw green, looked like a flashlight. I thought it was a cop or something. I'm going, oh, fuck, cops. So I turned around, I said, cops, man, cops. And everybody's like, oh, freaking out. So... I started looking, and the thing started coming towards me. And I'm like, fuck. It looked like it was running. So I'm like, fuck this. I'm bouncing, right? So I started running through the graveyard, getting the hell out of there. Well, this thing chased me all the way to the front. I turned around. It was like maybe three or four feet behind me, right? When I got to the edge of the graveyard, this thing kept coming towards the edge. When it got to the post at the edge of the graveyard, disappeared completely. Just went black. Nothing there. Really? Nobody there. Needless to say, we left. We did not go back. We left that night. I told him, I said, you can go back in that fucking graveyard, dude. I'm sitting in the car. Fuck y'all. All All right? I was just chased out of there by a light that was not attached to anything human. They don't want me here, so I'm going to sit in the car. (laughs) Yeah, man, that's crazy. Yeah. Now, here's some uh, stories about people that have been there. Um... This guy named Nate said, I've been there three different times. My first trip, I took a lot of pictures. Um, On the third trip, I did see something that made me wonder. I just got to the cemetery around 2 in the afternoon. I decided to walk around the entire outside edge, trying to look into the woods. I was looking for any buildings that may have been the rumored schoolhouses that used to be out there. Because... A lot of people say there was a town out there, too. Like, schoolhouses. Well, I'm sure there was. Yeah, the old town used to be out there. Well, yeah, like, I I give... (laughs) If there's headstones that are dated 1780, you're talking about a whole different way of living. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You would have 
that's how towns were. Basically, what, a church, a schoolhouse, and then a little village of, of little houses in a cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. So he said he was walking around for 20 minutes or so when he decided to leave. He hadn't seen nothing. As he's walking back to his car, he heard a branch break. He said it wasn't a twig snap. It had to be a thick, thick one to two inch branch. He said you could hear a, like a cracking sound, like somebody broke a branch over their leg. So he said he stopped and looked. Now, that you remember, this is two in the afternoon, so it's pretty bright outside. Daylight. I mean, it's not, yeah, it's yeah. daytime. You're, I mean, this ain't night. Right. So he said, he was looking over towards the woods. He said, next thing he saw was a big black shape. He said he couldn't tell what it was, but it was running along the outskirts of the cemetery. He said it didn't look like an animal at all. It just looked like a big, black, like cloudy shape. And he said it seemed to move too fast for any kind of animal and was all black. Um, he said it moved way too fast for a dog, especially in the woods. Um, he started to think maybe it was a bear, but he said a bear in northern Indiana? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, yeah. So, he saw a big black shape out there. I mean, that sounds like a shadow person. Or literally like a fucking skinwalker. Mm-hmm. So, here's a chick. She just calls herself Little Lady. She said that she was out there at night. And they didn't have any flashlights, so they just kept the car headlights pointed to the graveyard. They were there for about 15 minutes or so, and the headlights to the car just shut off by themselves. They wouldn't turn back on, but the car would start. So therefore, the car battery was not dead. She said, as we backed the car down off the, away from the graveyard onto the road, the headlights immediately came back on. Mm. <laughs> so there's definitely some kind of energy going on. Uh-huh. So, uh, this is from Jass88. He said, when I was younger, two nights in a row, we went out here, and the first night nothing happened, but me and my three friends felt the need to go back the following night. Upon the second visit, we encountered breaking branches... And we could hear people walking, leaves ruffling in the woods, and a sense of being watched. A friend of mine and me went to set in the car. As we sat with the headlights on, I witnessed a black shape moving through the graveyard. It was black at first, and then all of a sudden, it was all white. And the clothes that the shape was wearing were almost old as they came into view. Boots with puffy pants and a ruffled shirt. And then when it got to the front of the graveyard, it exploded into little white particles. I was standing right beside the huge monument in front of 13 graves. Sometime after the, that, I felt a huge jump on top of the vehicle. After watching... The another black sheet like thing go from tree to tree. At that point, I wanted to leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no shit. He said we stopped at a gas station, and I got to out to see what you know had made the thing on the top of my car, and I found a body imprint in the dew on the top of my car in the shape of a man, but no damage. It looked like someone had just laid on top of the hood of, or the roof of my car and put one hand on the back windshield. <laughs> <laughs> there was also scratching all around my car that looked like writing. None of it, though, could be read. I haven't been back since. <laughs> yeah, that's a wild experience right there. <laughs> and it's crazy that there's two... That there's that's two witnesses to a black shape. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah, that's what I, I that's what I thought. But man, watching something 
basically disintegrate into fucking well, I told you, I, particles. Dude, the only time I can truthfully say that, that I had a paranormal experience is that light. There was no way. I mean, the glowing from the tombstones, I kind of could kind of explain, you know. And the fact that there's 12 and 13 graves back and forth, I can kind of wrap my head around maybe I miscounted. Even though I did it a bunch of times, maybe one was kind of buried and I don't see it until you walk a certain way, then you notice it. You know, so I can wrap my head around that. But I can't explain the light. I can't explain the orb. I've seen lights out there a lot. And again, I can explain that because it's like, you know, maybe, you know, bouncing dust particles, light refracting, this and that. Right. But this thing chased me through the fucking graveyard and then disappeared in front of me right at the front of the graveyard. It just poof, like somebody shut off a flashlight. And nobody was there. There's no way I can, like, disprove that one. <laughs> I can truthfully yeah, say, was, wild, man. yeah, there's no way I can say, well, you know, there's no way around that one. It, it ran through the graveyard after me, and I was at the back of the graveyard, and when it got to the front, it just blinked. Bye-bye. So, I mean, we are light. Mm-hmm. So you'd have to, I mean, I don't, obviously there's nobody can sit here and tell you what a, what a soul is, mm-hmm. right? But anybody that's seen a dead body can obviously just get, common sense tell you, tells you there is something that animates this human avatar, right? Mm-hmm. Some kind of light or life force that brings this form of you alive. But once it dies, whatever it is, whatever that light is, that energy is, that brings this to life, once it dies, then I can buy that it leaves this body Mm -hmm. and is now energy or light freely... Is it freely? Is it free to come as it goes, as it pleases? Meaning... Once I die and leave, if I'm a caretaker of this cemetery and I want that light that is me to just stay there and protect that cemetery, maybe it's just my choice. It's possible. And it's very possible that that's what you're seeing. Yeah, it's very possible. So the next cemetery I want to talk about was Hayes Cemetery. And Hayes Cemetery is uh, in central Indiana. And uh, it's east of Indianapolis in a little town called Wilkinson. Um, in the early days, you could leave the town on Main Street and follow it to the cemetery. It's also known as Main Street Cemetery. So, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it is at the end of a rather rough gravel road. And the road climbs a small rise and cuts across to the center of the cemetery. Um... Hay Cemetery is neatly kept and a very open, big open cemetery. Uh, there's plenty of room between the headstones. And uh, it, it, again, is a really, really old cemetery. 1700s, 1800s, very old. Uh, mostly uh, the Hayes family members um, are buried there. Now, most of the... Man, dude, it's fascinating to think about... 1700s, man. Yeah. That really is. 1780s, 1700s. That's crazy shit. Yeah. And the headstones are still there. They're weathered. You can't read them, well, but they're I mean, there. It's just... It just almost gives me fucking... It literally gives me chills, man, to think about... Because that's not that fucking long ago. It is, but it isn't. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think people grasp it, man. Like, 1776. This country was not a country... Mm-hmm. This was not the United fucking States of America no. just that short amount of time ago. People still had to be buried, though. Well, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, these are the fucking people that are coming over across the, the ocean from Europe or wherever, Britain or wherever, you know what I'm saying? And they're moving inland, like you said, just basically kicking the uh, Indians who are already here. They're just wiping them out. Although, like, places like this, I don't necessarily know that that's true. Mm -hmm. 
But it might just be trying to set up a little village yeah. and trying to live side by side. But of course, I mean, no. Well, in the 1780s, you got to figure like the one we just talked about and this one, it was just little villages. In Indiana was mostly just wilderness. Well, yeah, because this was pretty much as far as people had pushed west at that point. And and they're literally like they're literally we're talking about frontiersmen here. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, because cabins, obviously yeah. most of the people are going to stay east. Yeah, they're not going to venture the far from the coast. Yeah. Boston, New York. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So you're talking about people that have broke away from that and said fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like we're go we'll go make our own town. Yeah. We'll go build our own village. Yeah. And that's who we're talking about these places having buried. That's pretty fucking cool. Oh, yeah. And it's wild, too, that a lot of them are, obviously, at the time, it's not out in the middle of nowhere. But here we are 200 years later, and the way that everything is shaped and society is shaped, like, now all of a sudden, these places are out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That's wild. At one time, they were right next to town. Like they said. They were the town, right? Main Street used to run right, right. in the cemetery. And I've never heard of this place, Wilkinson. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little tiny town outside of Indianapolis. <laughs> um, now Hayes has some interesting facts about it, though. That's that's really odd. First of all, there was a lot of body snatching back in the 17 and 1800s that went on in the cemetery. People would dig up the bodies, sell them to medical schools in Indianapolis. For mm. large amounts of profit, especially in the 1800s, um, this this went on quite a lot, which is why you know they started posting guards and stuff at cemeteries. But it happened in Hayes quite frequently. Another thing that well, yeah, happened because back then, it not, I mean, obviously, it's always going to be illegal to body snatch. <laughs> but I think if you know they're selling them as cadavers, for, yeah, for uh, dissection, mm -hmm. basically, and I'm pretty sure that that was legal too. Yeah, that was legal. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, there's a history of satanic rituals and devil worshiping happening a lot in this cemetery. Mm. And, uh, this is where we go to the first paranormal thing. Um, there's a tombstone and they call it the devil child's tombstone. There is a pitchfork tree growing Right on top of the child's grave. Oh, wow. And it was uh, known that this child died from a devil-worshipping family. Like, his family worshipped and practiced these rituals in the 1800s to bring about demons in this graveyard and do stuff. And they performed these rituals on this grave site. And now there's a tree in the shape of a pitchfork that grows out of it. And they said if they cut it down, it just grows back. Cut it down, it grows right back. Um, now, there's also reports that people used to go out and use Ouija boards quite frequently at the cemetery to try to call ghosts. God damn it. There's been reports of local kids and many paranormal groups using Ouija boards to try to call up the dead spirits. <laughs> God damn, dude. Talk about playing with fire. There was also a man <clears throat> that abducted and kidnapped his wife from Wilkinson. She wanted a divorce from him. She had went to court. She had filed for divorce. So he kidnapped her. He put her in the back of a car in the 1920s. And he drove her out to the cemetery and then shot her. After he hung her from a tree. He hung her from the tree in the cemetery. She wasn't dying fast enough, so he shot her in the face. Damn. <laughs> yeah. And many people have said that they see a woman hanging from that tree at night. Like, they'll see just a shape of a woman hanging from the tree swinging back and forth. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, divorce me, bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. He yeah, said, divorce not. me, you're a dead motherfucker. Not. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, Jesus Christ, dude. That, that's that's a little, a little much, bud. You can definitely see how it would leave a haunting, though. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, so people have, uh, many people have witnessed, uh, many people have seen a child near the uh, devil child's grave 
crying near the grave. And they don't know why, because that grave is really old. It's 1800s. So you can't even really read it anymore, but they said they've seen a child crying near that grave, and they've also seen the woman hanging from that uh, tree. They may have sacrificed the child if they were doing yeah. devil worship. Yeah, them. some people say they did. Possible. Well, I mean, if you're going to take Ouija boards out to the graveyard, I mean, you're going to call up all kinds of things. You're asking for it. Right? Yeah, you're asking for bad stuff to happen. So the next one we're going to talk about is called the Gypsy's Graveyard in Crown Point, Indiana. Okay. And uh, around the area, this cemetery is actually a local legend. It is a very small cemetery, again, out in the middle of nowhere. And it dates back to the mid-1800s. So this one's a little bit older than the others. We're, we're coming up in the years here, so mid-1800s. Its actual name is Southeast Grove Cemetery, but everyone knows it as Gypsy Cemetery. Um, so, there was the reason it's called Gypsy Cemetery is there was a band of gypsies that came through Crown Point in the 1840s, and this is all documented. And they decided to uh, camp out right outside of Crown Point, for a couple weeks. Well, of course, the locals didn't like that. You know, back then, there was this big kind of thing against gypsies. They thought they bring disease. They thought they were devil worshippers. So, when gypsies decided to camp out there, they, they kind of tried to get them the hell away from their fucking town. Mm -hmm. You know? Um... So the locals insisted they leave, blaming them for anything from stealing livestock to spreading disease or just being a nuisance. They demanded they leave after only a few days. So they did. The only reason that they had stopped to begin with was because they had a strange sickness that was spreading through the camp. And some of the gypsies were very gravely ill. On their way out of town, they buried those that had passed away in what is now Southeast Grove Cemetery, or Gypsy Cemetery. But as they were leaving, the townspeople, I guess they weren't leaving fast enough, because the townspeople came out there and started shooting at them, chasing them out of their town, killed a couple more. Damn. So as they were leaving, the uh, matriarch, which is the head gypsy lady, mm -hmm. She put a curse on the cemetery um, that whoever disturbs the dead would be badly cursed. Um, now, now people that say they visited the cemetery will find blood on their legs. They'll see shadows and orbs. They get an eerie feeling. And some have even reported black blotches or purple blotches, like bruising, appearing all up and down their leg after walking through the cemetery for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Damn. Um, so here's a story about uh, the cemetery. Uh, this guy and his two best friends... Um, Decided to go, you know, ghost hunting, hit the hot spots around there, and Gypsies was on the top of their list. Uh, he said, the first time I was there, uh, I saw some orbs, and there was some orbs in photographs. Then we left for a little while, and we went back. Um, there was nothing that time, but we decided to go back time and time again. He said, the last time I went there was 14 years ago. There was one parking spot on the opposite side of the road. So my friend parked her car in that spot around 10 p.m. that night. As we were preparing to cross the street, headlights shone down the road coming our way. Of course, you know, we tried to move out of the way as the car came closer and we saw it was a police officer. He stopped, rolled down his windows and asked where we were going. He said, I'm going to let you go in there, but, there, but don't do any damage. We were not destructive, and we were always respectful of the dead, so we knew we would not be a problem. Apparently, uh, 
Right before he rolled up his window to drive away, he said, Be careful, this place is very strange. We get calls all the time about things happening out here. There is really something wrong with this place. We thanked him and he left. We weren't really scared by his warnings because we'd been there before. As we walked through the old gate, there was a strange fog that started to settle over the cemetery and got even thicker as we walked through. In the center of the graveyard, there is an angel statue. As we got close to her, the three of us froze. I started to get this awful feeling and couldn't, and I had to get out of there very, very fast. Mm. One of my friends said that he saw the angel statue, statue grinning at him as we ran away. <laughs> so, as we got out of the gate, I turned around and froze. There appeared to be a weird shape gliding through the cemetery about 20 feet away. At one point, its head snapped in our direction and then turned forward again to continue gliding through the cemetery. <laughs> that was enough for me. <laughs> I dove into the back seat of my friend's car, and she and our other friend who had seen the angel statue grinning at him floated out of the area. <laughs> The next morning, I drove back to my friend's house, the one who drove the night before, because we were heading out to do uh, who knows what. We got into her car, the doors locked, and the radio started, the doors locked by themselves, and the radio started turning on and off by itself. She hadn't even put the key in the ignition yet. Oh, damn. It did this for 20 seconds, then stopped. We got out, and I went immediately home. <laughs> and I have not been back to Gypsy since that day. I'm not sure I'm ever going to <laughs> No, if you see uh, stone yeah. statues grinning at you, and disembodied shapes gliding through the cemetery, and then their head, he said literally snapped and looked at him. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm not going either. No. I'm, I mean, I'll go once. But that shit happens. And I'm, I'm, once I get fucking scared, I'm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, once that happens. I really don't have any reason to go back. No, I'm not going again. Not going again. So I'm going to do one more, and then we'll end this. And this is uh, a quick one here. So uh, about halfway between Brazil and Terre Haute on US-40, about a how, half a mile south of Cloverland, lies the most haunted cemetery in Indiana, according to Traveler's Guide. Damn. It is known as the Cloverland Cemetery, or 100 Step Cemetery. Okay. Now, this cemetery faces west on a hill overlooking County North Road 675 West. It was established around the time of the Civil War. Okay. 1860s. 1860s. <clears throat> but it's still active today. It's still buried there. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. It's called 100 Steps, as anybody can guess, because there's 100 steps to reach the top of this cemetery. 100 stone steps from the bottom to the top of this hill. Damn. Um, so, there's two things that they say happened in this cemetery. Uh, at midnight, if you go to the cemetery, you can count a hundred total steps by the time the summit is reached. Then if you walk back down and count the number of steps a second time, there will be a different number. It won't be a hundred. Now, again, I can say, you know, maybe you're just miscounting. It's dark. A it's a lot of steps. You know... Um, I mean, you're counting them in the middle of the night, but this one is a little weirder, okay? In, in this, and there's been many accounts of people who have seen this guy and claim that they saw this, too. So, after arriving at the top of the 100 steps, on the summit, if you turn back around and look down the hill, a ghost of the first caretaker will appear. 
And then they, he will then reveal how the visitor, visitor will die in a vision. Damn. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. Now, then you're supposed to go down the steps. If the number of steps you count down is still 100, as it was when you got to the top, the vision is wrong. Okay. He's just fucking with you. But if there's a mismatch where you count 101, 102, the visitor will die in the manner revealed by the caretaker. But it doesn't say when. No. It just gives you the manner in which you'll die. Now, if you try to walk off the steps or don't count the steps out loud as you're walking down a it's hand. A no. Oh. If you see, so you're supposed to go as you're going down the steps after you see this guy. You're supposed to count the steps out loud as you're going down. But if you walk off the staircase, or you don't count out loud the steps as you're going down, a hand will push you to the ground and leave deep red handprints for several days. Jesus. Mm-hmm. God damn. Now there has been numerous accounts from people that have said that not only have they saw this guy, but he revealed to them how they would die. They've also been many people who report seeing this guy running because they were scared so they didn't see the vision of how they're going to die. Before they got a few steps, they fell down to the ground they had a handprint on their back. That's wild shit right now. Yeah, yeah. And there's been many people who have seen this. That's, that's nuts. Yeah. There's also reports in this cemetery of normal hauntings. If you go to the top uh, at night, you can see people walking through the graveyard. There's been many reports of that. Uh, different, you know, your normal haunting thing. But yeah, I thought that was neat because of the guy and showing you your death. I mean, I definitely think that there are situations like that. You know, where you're going in to a place that is haunted. Yeah. Because you've been told it's haunted or whatever. And so you're going in with that energy. You're going in with that mindset. And that you might see hallucinations or uh, illusions. In most cases, probably. But I also think there's, there's something to it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Why well, highly doubt it's a caretaker that you're seeing? Because like when you got people, when you got two different people describing the same black shape, yeah, looking figure or looking shape, like you know what I'm saying? That that seems too coincidental to me. Well, let me tell you, I know what I saw at 13 grades, right? And yeah, I have no doubt they saw black shapes. I have no doubt they saw things because that is the most haunted place I've ever been in my entire life. Okay, I've been to a lot of places that were quote-unquote haunted, right? Graveyards, houses, different things. Uh, I went to the Devil's Church one time out by Kokomo. Uh, never really saw anything. I mean, I heard some noises. There were some things I probably couldn't explain, even at when we went to Story Inn. Yeah, there's a few things I probably, you know, can't explain. But full-blown apparitions, no. You know, stuff like that. But at 13 grades, yes. Right. I saw it. You know, the light came after me. No way I can explain that. I've seen the tombstones glowing like Christmas lights and blinking on and off. So, yeah, for somebody to say, yeah, I saw a black figure, yeah, no problem. I believe that 100%. Right. And the fact that it used to be an Indian burial mound. Yeah, that's 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 definitely... yeah, and that they know for a fact that Miami Indians used to be camped right around there, had their village right there. Well, just just the uh, Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. Yeah, same thing. You know, all the uh, paranormal things that go on there, and that it's supposedly cursed. Yeah. You know, I definitely believe in that. Just like the Crown right. Point one, the gypsies. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because, I mean, I think another word back in those days for gypsy would be witch. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, if you murder gypsies, they're going to curse your graveyard. They're absolutely. going to curse the land they're standing on. Right, absolutely. And, you know, at the time, it wasn't even a graveyard. 
It wasn't right. a graveyard until they started burying their people there. And they had to bury their people there because some crazy settlers decided to shoot a few of them. Mm-hmm. You know? <clears throat> and yeah, they probably did curse the damn thing. Yeah. And it's probably not a place you should go fucking around. Right. Absolutely not. Right. And if you got a graveyard like Hayes, where, where you know satanic rituals have went on, where you know people were murdered in the graveyard, where you know possibly a child was sacrificed, where there's Ouija boards being used. Yeah, that's not a place you want to go fucking around with. Because who knows what they opened and didn't close in that motherfucker. Well, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, I mean, people summon up these negative energies and then they don't. Yeah. And they leave them. Right. You're leaving an open portal on a graveyard. Which would, you know, explain why headlights would be turned off. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, things like that. It's just weird energy. Yeah. It's just strange, negative, weird energy. And the Hundred Step Cemetery, I would debate that what you're seeing isn't necessarily even a spirit. You're possibly seeing an evil spirit, a demon, something like that. If it's showing you the future and showing you how you're going to die... Yeah, that's crazy shit. You're probably not seeing the caretaker. You're right. probably seeing an evil being that gets his rocks off by showing people how they're going to die. Sure. Especially if sometimes it's bullshit and sometimes it's real. You're right. probably just like, yeah, watch this. Right, right, right. I'm going to fuck with him this time. Right. Yeah. Very possible. Very possible. But anyways, that was our episode on cemeteries in Indiana. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yep, yep. Um, Like I said, if you enjoy the podcast, please tell somebody so we can, you know, continue to grow. We have grown quite a lot over the last year, so I know you guys are listening. Thank you. And (laughs) we do appreciate it. But recommend us to a friend. Tell somebody about us. Uh, You know, have them listen to us. See what they think. Um, and you know, then we'll continue to grow and we can do even more things for you guys, you know, especially if you like the Christmas special, because if we get big enough, I promise you, I will do it on TV and we'll do it live and we'll do all kinds of crazy stuff. (laughs) I promise you we will. So, but I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time. Later.